My name is Larry Hamburg. I had um, squamous cell carcinoma, stage four, diagnosed in June of 2007. Well, I tell you, at 50, I was the luckiest guy in the world and never sick and, you know, working out three or four days a week and eating right and, you know, stopped partying years ago and uh, I was the last guy that I thought would get cancer. I was uh, buttoning my tie, my shirt to uh, put a tie on, which I didn't do often in those days, and uh, realized I was having trouble buttoning my top button and started a little self-exam and felt a lump. Whenever you feel something on one side of your body and you don't feel it on the other side, it's time to uh, worry about it a little bit. I had a base of the tongue tumor the size of a Super Bowl, four centimeters. This is the size of a baseball, seven centimeters. I was no longer a dentist, I was no longer a husband, I was no longer a father, I was a cancer patient. After I was diagnosed, it was like getting hit by a Mack truck, and I couldn't make a decision, you know, if I came to a corner, go left, go right, go straight, I had no idea. So I had seven, seven chemo sessions, um, one every three weeks. And uh, so in the middle of that, that's when we started radiation. So as crappy as I felt from the chemo, then you start radiation, and then by the middle of radiation, that's when you really feel lousy. Um, one day I was lying in bed, it was in the throes of chemo radiation, and I couldn't get out of bed. Emotionally, I, I was paralyzed. I can't explain it. Uh, I just, I literally couldn't move. And um, I had my phone, but I didn't have my glasses on, and I couldn't get up to go get my glasses. So the only number that I could remember was my parents um, and the only one that I could think of calling was my dad and I called him up and I said um, when you were at war in World War II how did you get up out of bed in the morning and put on your helmet and grab your gun and go fight and that's what I felt like I felt like I was in a war and I had to get up, I had to put on my helmet, I had to grab my gun, and I had to go to war, and I just lived one day at a time. I had three-month plans, six-month plans, one-year plans, five-year goals, ten-year goals, goals that, you know, when, they, when you go to these motivational seminars or whatever, you listen to the tapes, and they say, well, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? I had all these things written down, and now you tell me, live one day at a time? That's not the way I was wired, but that's the only way that I could do it. You know, I'm still figuring it out eight years later, pretty much one day at a time.